Database concepts like normalization, relationships, primary keys, and end to one are all very confusing and off-putting when you first start building with Power Apps. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna explain what all that is and more. Whether you're using SharePoint, Excel, SQL, Dataverse, or some other random data source, it doesn't matter. How you structure your data is what matters for performance, scalability, and the long-term health of your app. We're gonna do this all by starting with a simple list of data and then show you how we break it all out, explaining all the concepts along the way. We'll have some diagrams, we'll have some demos, just try all those little things that you need to connect the dots. And so this will be a little bit different than my usual YouTube video though. Why? Because this is a subset of the lessons I teach live at Power Platform University. Uh, this is actually the class I'm teaching them on Thursday this week. And so what I wanted is I wanted to give you a feel for just why I love that program. I think it's something like that so much and what the university would be like. All right, so let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. So let's jump right into the PowerPoint deck mid-flight, right? This is usually an hour-long session, so I gotta you know, cut it down for you. Well, let's start with just a simple table. So here I've got an example of my employees table, right? So there's an ID column, a name column, an email column, a department column, and a department manager, right? So I'm using Excel for my fake data here, but once again, at the end of the day, really, when you have a table, right? Like a table could be a Dataverse table. It could be a SharePoint list, right? Those are just technically tables. It could be an Excel table, a, a SQL table. It could also sometimes be, what we used to call them entities, um, even an array or a collection over in Power Apps, right? Like those aren't technically like tables, but they are tables. Like it's just, it's rows and columns, right? That's what we're really after here, this whole idea of table. When we look at this one though, I want you to kind of see this is our basic one. And right away, you hopefully notice there's some repetitive data in here, right? So even though we've got three different people, you can see that both Chewy and Shane are in the same department, IT, and then we're storing the department manager, right? It's a pretty typical setup. One of the problems with this design, though, is what happens if department manager changes, right? Daniel gets a promotion or wins the lottery, whatever, right? And all of a sudden, the department manager becomes buddy. In this particular example, we are storing that redundant data in this table. And so we would have to go not only fix our department's table, we'd have to come fix this employee's table because we're storing the manager here. Even though the manager information, we might need it, it's not technically part of that data. Last thing I want you to take away with this before we leave is notice over on the left, this ID column. This is called the primary key. All of the data sources you use are going to have a primary key. So in SharePoint, it'll always be ID. In Dataverse, it is always the name of the table as a column, right? It's called the unique identifier column. SQL Server, you have to define it yourself. Excel, you've got to define it yourself. But every column is going to need this primary key, right? That is the way that we can reference a unique record in that table. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to break up this data into something better, right? So the blue table at the top, that's the same as we just saw in the previous one. But below, we have the green tables. And so we've done something called normalization. Normalization is where you remove redundancy from your tables, right? So in our case, we said, hey, we want to have an employees table. Yes, right? So we've got the same key employee things, name, email. But instead of storing their department, we are just storing the department ID, right? So if we look over here at the department table, there is a department ID. So this is the primary key for this call or this table, right? And so we can see that if we look at Nicola, her department ID is 1001. If we look in this table, that means she's an executive and the manager is herself. That's right, Nicola is so awesome, she manages herself. If we look at Chewy and Shane, their department ID is 1002, which is the IT department and Daniel. So now we've created a relationship, right? We've got the two tables. They are connected via the, what is called a primary key and a foreign key. And so if you think about it, remember ID is the primary key of this table. Department ID is the primary key of this table. Over here, department ID is the foreign key. This is how this table knows which ID to pull from over here, right? So this is called a foreign key. Not something you'll see a lot in like SharePoint uh, terms or in um, like Dataverse. Like they don't really say, here's your foreign keys. But I wanted you to understand because you will see that. And one of the things I want to do with this session is make it so you're not afraid when you hear foreign key. You're like, ah, what do I do? It's not a big deal. And so remember, this whole thing is called normalization. Right? Like I spent five years in college. Yeah, it took me five years to graduate. Shh. But I spent five years studying this stuff. And basically, all they taught us in the end was how to normalize something down to there's different degrees of normalization. We're not going to get into all that. But normalization is just taking one big table with a bunch of redundant data and splitting it out into one or more other tables that then have you know, their own data so we get rid of redundancy. Okay, so that's normalization. So the first type of relationship we want to talk about is a mini to one, right? So what a mini to one is, is that is saying that, hey, look over here, we see Nicola, right? We've got her name, we got her email, and then her department ID. 
Nicola can only be associated with one department, right? So many of these people can only, but each one can only be associated with one at a time department, right? And that's where you see over here that Nicola is associated with 1001, but both Chewie and Shane are with 1002, right? But Nicola can't be associated with 1001 and 1002. So that's the one, right? So the mini is the side of the equation where you've got all the data and then you're doing that lookup, right? And that's what these are often, we'll hear these referred to in like SharePoint and Dataverse, these are called lookup columns. A lookup column is where we look into another table to get that information, right? We're looking up against that table and then we're selecting one record from the other table and pulling it in, okay? So when you hear mini to one, like it sounds super scary, it's just a lookup from the perspective of the side that is doing the lookup, right? Because really what you're gonna see in a minute is mini to one and one to mini are the same thing, it's just looking at it from a different angle, right? And so right now we're looking from the perspective of we're on the employees table, right? So this is the mini side because we can only look, we can only attach each record to one of the departments. You also might hear this referred to as N to one, right? Or N colon one as I've got it over there on the right. All right, so let's do a quick demo and show you this in action over in SharePoint. Okay, so if we're in my SharePoint list, I'm in my employees list, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a column so we can kind of see how this works in the N. So we'll go up here and we'll say here, and we want to go to list settings. Remember, Dataverse would have this very similar functionality. And then what we want to do is scroll down a little bit and we're going to say create a column. And so we're going to call it DEPT because we have one called department. Shh. And instead of making it a text like we normally do, we want to make that a lookup, right? So by doing this, we're saying, hey, I want to have a mini to one relationship. And what table do I want to have a one relationship with? So I would go down here to get information from. And then if we look, there is a list called departments. And then I can choose which column I connect to. So we're just going to connect to the title, but we could pull in additional information. And we would get into that in university, we go much deeper, but I just want you to see the surface level how this works. So that looks great. So now we're going to click on OK over here. So this will add our column and create our lookup, our relationship. We go here to employees. And now if we click on Nicole's record, edit it, and we say edit all. If we scroll way down here to the bottom, we should see her department, a little fancy symbol. And if we go here, and so now it is showing us the choices, right? So if we looked at that list, it has all these departments already defined. And so if we choose executive and say save, under the hood, it is connecting those via that ID, that foreign key, primary key, like SharePoint's worried about all that. We don't have to think about those things in this particular context. Now, if we go to do like patch and unwind that manually, we absolutely would. But once again, we're not gonna go that far down. But there you go, that's a mini to one connection. Oh, and real quick before we leave, we'll just show you, here's the departments list. And so you can see that's where it got all those from. And then we have all of that data that is associated, right? So now the manager, the phone number, their bonus structure, the manager email, it is all being connected, right? So we can then have that relationship, but we don't have to carry this redundantly in our employees list, right? That's the whole point of this. All right, I'll switch back over to the PowerPoint. Okay, so then now one to many, right? That's the same exact picture from the last one. The difference here is when you say one to many, what you're doing is you're talking from this direction. So if you were in department table, you would say the department table has a one to many relationship back over here to, in this case, the employees table, right? That's the only difference, right? It's many to one and one to many, they're the same exact thing. Just you have to, if you're talking about from here, from the, this side, it's a many to one. If you're talking about it from this side, it's a one to many. Once again, sometimes they make these database concepts sound all fancy and complicated, and really they're, you know, they're not, right? Like that's why we're here having this session, right? We're trying to dis, you know, get, dispel some of this craziness. You will sometimes see this written as one colon in, or one to many, one to n, that type of thing. And these is what I would call a parent-child relationship, right? Because if you think about in this example, if I went and I went to the department field here and I said, hey, you know, I've got, you know, who's the parent, right? It's the department. And then what are the children? It would be all of the many side, right? All the things that are associated with that department, right? Which makes no sense in this case, right? I, I totally agree, right? That's, a, that's what it is, but, that make, that's dumb, right? Let's switch and look at another demo to make this make more sense. All right, so this is a Power App I've built a long time ago. There's a link up there to kind of the series. It takes like 10 videos to get to here, but you know, it's a good one, right? So if you go here and we say, I wanna create an expense, right? It's an expense report app. So over here, we've got the expense description, right? So video demo, you know, we've got the different date of expense, type of expense, it's for training, right? So this is the parent, if you think about it. Over here on the right, we want to have the children data, right? So what does the video demo have? It has pizza, right? I'm kind of hungry. And pizza's $5.99, a slice probably, right? 
we save, we get another line. We have some tea, if you know me at all. I love to drink sweet tea. We'll call that 250. We'll save that. And so these are the children. Now we can go down here. I could attach a file. We're not gonna mess with that. We're not trying to get in this app too much. But when I hit save, what we're going to do under the hood, I'm gonna show you the back end in just a second. But when we save, what it's going to do is it's going to create this. This is the parent. And then it's going to go here to the children where we have the many to one relationship. And we're going to define and say, hey, what is the ID of the parent we just created? And then we're going to save that over here so we can connect these dots back, right? So let's hit save. Hey, after a second, it finished saving. It's kicked us back over here. And like if we were now to go and look at the data, so switch over to SharePoint, we have two different lists here, right? So the first one is the master. This is the, the parent, right? So if we go down here to the bottom, so all the way to the bottom, look at this. 191, that's the ID that automatically got generated for video demo, 313, that's today, 849, you know, all the fun stuff that we just did, right? So all that is down here. If we then look in the details, right? So this, right, this is the one side. This is the mini side. If we were going to here, what we're going to see is that one of the columns is called master ID, right? The who is the parent ID. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, because it's way down there, down here at the bottom, look, there's two new entries, pizza and tea, 599, 250, but they're both set to the ID of 191. So I didn't use a lookup column here. What I did was I maintained my own keys, right? I created my own foreign key, right? That is what this master ID column is that points back. So then that way, if we go back over to my app and we say, hey, I wanna view and edit those. Look, there's the video demo. When I click on it, there's the pizza and the tea, right? So this is a gallery that is showing me everything from the expense parent list, the expense master. And then here, this is the expense items, but it is filtered to only show where the ID, the master ID, that foreign key is equal to the foreign key or the primary key of this column, right? So that's how we connect those two pieces back together. Once again, we're not gonna mechanically build any of this today. We're here for the concepts, but I wanted to show you to an action because this, this is like the, 90% of the complicated apps in the world, right, is, has some form of this parent-child relationship, which is really just the many-to-one, one-to-many, maintaining those foreign keys and you keeping up with that, whether it's using lookup columns so it automatically happens, or if you're doing it manually like I did in this one, either way it's happening. Okay, so now that we've seen that in a very simple form, let's look at it a little bit more complicated. All right, so this is what we see a lot, especially from new makers. This is a very wide and repetitive table. So this is one for inspections, and so look, when they inspected this Model S, they had three questions. So there's three rows in here, right? The inspector name is the same for all three of these rows. The inspector email is the name for all three. The inspector department is the same. The inspector department manager, you notice the pattern here. And then we get to the unique question text and question answer, right? Is it clean? No, what color is it? It's white. My favorite feature, it goes zero to 60 and 1.9. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and then we inspect the Model X, right? Same thing, we're gonna see that there are three lines, right? This is what we see, this is really big and wide. And what really stinks about this is, you know, when you start to expand out, right? If you go to four questions, now you have four rows for everyone, then five rows, then six rows. Like it really gets big and, you know, painful. We don't want to build structures like this. This is the perfect example of somewhere where you can do some normalization, right? When you see a bunch of repetitive data, normalize. Now, we're gonna take this one and we're gonna do it to the nth degree, but that's okay. So this is what we'd actually build. We would turn that one table into four tables, right? So we have the inspection. So what are we gonna do in inspect, or what are we inspecting, right? So we have the Model S here. We then had the questions. So each of the questions were in their own, right? Is it clean? The question type, the question responses, like we're not gonna worry about how this works, but we're able to track all of this. We have a table just for tracking the questions. We also have the employees table again, right? And then back to the department ID, right? Well, no, we didn't put that one here, but that would also be in this mix, right? So there's actually five. I guess I should put that on the slide. Yeah, what do you do? But now over here on the far right, we've got inspection responses. So this is the glue, right? This is the thing that holds this whole story together. So you can see that it's just a bunch of numbers, really, right? Because you can see that, look, so for response ID 901, so if we look over here, where do we have, uh, or uh, sorry, that's the primary key for this one. So that's gonna be unique here. But so, we, for inspection ID one, there's the column one for, right? Inspection ID one, right? So that was a Tesla Model S. We answered question ID 1001, which is, is it clean? And then we answered is true. <laughs> Not true, but that was what we answered on that particular day, right? Cars are clean and dirty on different days. Inspection ID one also asked question 1002, what color is it? It's blue, it's actually white now. 
And then the third one here is uh, what's your favorite feature of the fact it was electric, right? Like, so these are old answers, but, but you get the idea. This table doesn't really tell you anything by itself, but it glues everything together, right? Because this is something that's been completely normalized. So if you go down here, at first, this big spaghetti mess looks really scary. Like you're, you could be overwhelmed. Oh my gosh, what is that? It's not a big deal. You know what this is, right? Start here. So if we look, right? So we can see that question ID is a mini to one to the question table. Well, that makes sense, right? The answer is just the answer. The inspection ID goes over here to the inspection table, right? So that's just another mini to one. Boop, perfect, that's how we get there. If we go here and then we go to the inspector ID, this little thing should have been drawn over here. Oopsie. Uh, but you can see the inspector ID of three. Boop, that would tell you that I was the inspector, Shane, right? So that's how that's connected. And then here we've got our mini to one, one last time from department ID 1002. And so I'm still in IT managed by Daniel. When you see these things, right? Like these are real easy to get scared and overwhelmed by. You don't have to let these overwhelm you, right? If you, if you don't look at the whole thing and go, oh, I could never understand that. If you just go find one table and start asking yourself, hey, okay. So here like inspector ID of three, whoop, right? Following that one line. Okay, now you understand how those two are related. And remember this, is a mini to one, but we could say, hey, department table, you are a one to many, right? And employee table, you are a one to many to inspection table, right? Inspection table, you're one to many back to inspection response table, like, because one to many or many to one just depends on what side of the coin you're looking from. It doesn't have, like, right? don't, don't waste, waste brain cells on it, right? But this is a pretty good design. Like, this is a pretty robust app. Um, and so I'm going to point up there, I think, and so there is a video where I talk about this called uh, Better Data Model, where I kind of walk through building, not this exact demo, but I do a very similar type of thing where I go from that one big wide table, right? Because this has the same or if not more information than these, what we slowed on this previous slide, right? But this is a much more organized, scalable, you're not worried about exploding, you're not worried about extra questions causing confusion. This is a very nice option. So that video will help you with that. Very cool. Actually, you want to see a quick demo of it? All right, since I wrote demo on the bottom of the slide, fuck, I got a demo. All right, one sec, let's go. All right, so here's the app that other one's going to teach you how to build, right? But this is typically what I see from my, like, hey, I got a chore report here, who did it, when did they do it, and then I answer all of these different questions, right? Like, you know, we got to do all this stuff. What's worse about this is not only does this make one big wide table, but this also causes you problems because somebody wants to add a new chore, like say walking buddy, right? I don't think walking buddy is on there then what we would have to do is we'd have to go add it to the table. So the table would get even wider and then we'd come in here and edit this thing to add a new drop down, update the patch, all that. When you learn that data model that we just showed you, what we can do there here is we're basically feeding in that questions table, right? So look, this is now a gallery that is just showing you all the questions. And for every question, we're able to feed the type of question, right? Feed the fish is text. Uh, fed chewy is a choice column. Water and chewy, was a yes, no column, right? So we're able to feed that in. And so this is gonna let us save and do the same thing, but it's a more flexible data model. It scales better. And if someone adds a new question to that question table, it will literally just show up at the bottom here, right? Take buddy for a walk because someone added that in the table. It just popped right in here. As fast as we add it there, next time we refresh, it shows up. So go check out this video if you haven't, but this one is kind of taking that data concept pretty far down the rabbit hole. Like if you finish that video and go, I understand you're gonna be in a good place. All right, the last one of these concepts that comes up sometimes is this thing called mini to mini. I'll be honest, I can't think of but a handful of apps of the thousand plus we've built here at Power Apps 901 that do mini to mini, but if you run into them, no big deal. What mini to mini is, all it is, right? Don't, don't overthink this. So remember earlier when I said that, you know, departments had a, or employees had a mini to one to department, right? So we could, you know, Chewy could only be in the, IT department, right? Like we said there was that, you know, he could only choose one. And a mini to mini, all that's different is that now Chewy could be both in the IT department and the executive department. We could have many choices from that other side. So we're not just having a mini to choose one, we're mini to choose mini. So in this example, what I did was I built out, I added another table called the charities table. So the different charities that we might donate to. And so here you can see that, you know, we have the employees table, we have the charities table, Notice that neither one of these has a foreign key. They both have their primary key, right? EID and CID. And so what happens in a mini-to-mini -mini relationship 
is it becomes this third table called a mapping table. The mapping table just says, hey, so for employee one, right? So it's Nicola. She belongs to Charity 402, Frog Friends. And for Nicola, she is in 401, Pet People. So instead of employees table knowing what charities Nicola is attached to, we have to look in this middle table, this mapping table. So when you create a mini to mini relationship, you need a mapping table in the middle. Now, if you use Dataverse, it will set one of these up for you. What's the problem with that though, is it's hidden. You can't get to it. So I'll be honest, I think if every time that we've ever had to build a mini to mini relationship that I can think of, we have, instead of using a, uh, you know, letting Dataverse create the connection and having this hidden table, we said, you know what? We're gonna do kind of like I showed you in that first SharePoint example. We created our own table in the middle and then we maintain the relationship. And the reason for that is because then we could see the mapping table. We could manipulate the mapping table. We could sort, filter, do whatever you needed to do with it because we controlled all three pieces. If you let Dataverse set it up, you don't control the middle piece. SharePoint, on the other hand, if you do a lookup and you select multiple lookups, which creates a many to many, right, technically, but what happens is SharePoint stores this mapping table inside the record of the employees table. It's fine, it works, but there's not a standalone table. Every record has its own mapping table embedded in the record. So it's a little complicated to unravel if you start doing weird things with patches or the APIs or things like that. Totally works, right? Uh, you know, I think, yeah, if you look at my up there, I have another video, so many videos. Um, a comp patching complex columns, I talk about it in there uh, if you wanna see how that works. But in reality, mini to mini doesn't come up very often. If it does, you know, creating your own mapping table, there's also some other ways to do it. Once again, we don't have the time to get into today, but in university, we'd kind of double click on that and go for a double click on. Is that like a weird buzzword? I don't, I probably shouldn't have said that. It sounds really dumb, doesn't it? it? Sounds like one of those manager speaks, but we would go deeper on the topic. Mini to mini is uh, a thing, but it's not the most common, right? And you'll see that sometimes written as end to end, M to end, you know, it, there's a lot of different ways it shows up. So where do we go from here? So if this was Thursday session with the university students, we'd sort of build these different scenarios from the ground up. We'd go kind of tear some of those things apart. We'd look at the mechanics. Each data source has got a little bit of its own. Like we didn't talk about SQL much. In the case of SQL, we we're basically just creating those columns and managing them all ourselves, right? Because we have to create the primary column. So we got to create that foreign key column ourselves. It's not really a big deal. We're just kind of doing that. There's also a bunch of weird stuff we can get into with like referential integrity and stuff. But once again, this is kind of an intro. So this, you've got enough now to go and build and think a little bit about your data model. And so, you know, one of the things I'd encourage you all to do is why don't you come check out Power Platform University, right? If you wanna to learn to master the Power Platform, it is a six month program. We've got 18 live sessions just like this, where it's me teaching just those handful of students every week, right? We get on a call on Thursday afternoons. And we, uh, we learn different concepts. Like this data concept, this goes across two weeks. We spent three weeks on planning and design. Um, you know, we teach both the technical skills and a bunch of soft skills. We, do, we bring in specialists for some of the stuff that I'm not good at, like Power BI, model-driven apps. It's pretty cool. You even get your own personal mentor. So Scuba or Steven will be your mentor. Their job is to get you through university, answer your questions. You get mentor time with them and you get someone that's kind of invested in your learning. You get unlimited access to all of our on-demand and live training classes. I got a live training class coming up in April. So if you sign up for university now, not only university program, you get to attend the live uh, standalone trainings on its own. There's hands-on projects, there's an exam. If you pass all that, you even get a nice certification. So definitely go check out all the options you got over at training.powerapps901.com. A lot of fun ways to learn with me. Questions, comments, did you enjoy this? Do you wanna see you know, another layer deeper of this database stuff, or is this enough stuff your brain's melted? That's okay, just go watch it again, right? But these are those words that people like to use, but if you're gonna build power apps and you need to understand data, relationships, lookups, all that fun stuff, like these are the words that if you're a little more comfortable with, make those all a little less scary. All right, and with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day.